Hey, this video is brought to you by Cloudways, your one-stop shop for Laravel and WordPress hosting. I've been a customer since 2016. They've never let me down. They're super reliable and I have no intentions of switching. So if you're looking for uh, a, a really great VPS host that's reliable and helpful when you need them to be, definitely check out Cloudways. Uh, you can sign up using the link in the description below. In this video, I'm going to go over some basics of Laravel commands. They've been really helpful in my career so far. We've done a lot of backfills and, and uh, just data updates in the background in production with them. And uh, we really love them for that. I guess we'll just get, get started with just the basic, how do you even make a command? And it's funny, to make a command, you use uh, a Laravel command. So uh, I have a fresh Laravel application here. I'm just gonna create a command from scratch using PHP artisan make colon command. I'm gonna call it sample command. As you can see, it created it and it's gonna exist now inside my application and it looks like this. And right off the bat, I'm gonna change the signature to be sample colon run. And this is what we're actually gonna use in our console to run the command. Now I'd recommend if you're gonna be working on a production application, uh, I would definitely recommend having a uh, command description set for each command. It's gonna make it easier to just go through your commands and remember what they do uh, when you're looking for one. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna leave it. And I think to start, I'm gonna do just a simple line output when I run this command. So uh, if I clear my console and do PHP artisan sample run, you can see that it outputs hey. And this is a very, very basic functionality. Let me make this a little bigger. You can also do info and that looks similar, uh, just green. You can also do uh, warn and you can also do error. So these all look different. And the reason these exist is because sometimes you're running a, a very long process and you wanna be warned or uh, shown an error. Or you just wanna make it obvious that something is happening and it, you know, whether it's an error or a good thing, you have different colors and settings for this. This is just a, a very basic thing. Usually what you use commands for is updating database stuff. So uh, one thing that, that really works well with that is arguments and options. Now, an argument is just something you pass through the the command when you're running it using the signature you set, uh, and in this case, I mean, I'm this is a this is a fresh Laravel application. We only have basically a user stable and a couple others, but we do have a user factory. So what we can do is request a count here for how many users we want to create. This is just an example. This is not useful in any way, but it'll demonstrate how a command could work. Uh, we could do user. I don't obviously want to import that. So that would be app models user. User factory create. And if we were to leave it like that, it would just create one because this is null. So um, whatever you enter here is the, is the number of models that will create in your database we want to use the count. So what we'll do is we'll do this argument count. And if we go to, let's clear our console, go into Tinker and just do, I've done this before, let's do a count here of the users in the database. So we have 50 right now from a previous attempt at this video, but if I do app models user truncate we can see that there are now zero so if i now run my command not enough missing okay so it's it's gonna it's gonna require a count now we do one and go back into tinker there'll be one user if we do nine now there'll be 10. So that's working. Let me clear this. Uh, I believe I can make this uh, nullable doing something like this, but don't quote me. I forget now. Yep. So I'll go to here and there should be 11. Yep. So adding a question mark after the argument name will make it nullable. And one of the uh, other things we could do, and this is also makes uh, commands way more useful, is you could use an option. I believe they're called an option. Let me check my notes here. Yep, it's called an option. 
it's uh, same same thing. You use curly braces, and you could do in our case. Let's say we wanted to uh, wipe the users table fresh, uh, wipe the users table clean rather uh, before we create the new users. We could do something like fresh. I've decided myself to name this fresh, but what denotes that this is a uh, an option is the two dashes here, and I can check. Let's uh, let's just say I check here option fresh if this exists. We're going to do a user truncate before running the other stuff, meaning uh, creating the other users. Let's see how that works. Um, remember, we have 11 users now. So if I just run it like this, we should have 12. It should not truncate anything. We can check that. Oh, it did. Oops, this option fresh. Let's try that again. So I have one user right now. Let's just make sure that that is the case. Yes, we have one user right now. And if I run this again, we should have two in theory. Let's see if that works out. Yes, we do. Now, if I uh, decided to run this and create, let's say a random number, I don't know, something that, let's just say 13 or you know something random and do dash dash fresh after, there won't be one or two users in the table. There should be 13 exactly and they should all be brand new. So let's run this and see what happens. And we currently have 13 users. So that's how you do that. Um, now this is like, this is kind of useful and it's kind of cool that you could do this. You could also, uh, I'm not going to go through all of them, but you could actually um, ask, I believe. So do you want to? Previous users. Do you want to delete previous users? This should, when I run this command, it should ask me. So just to be, just to be clear, we currently have 13. And if I run this command, let's see what happens. Do you want to delete previous users? Yes. If I do yes, um, sorry, no. What am I saying? This, it, this will add. When you ask this, it will save whatever your response is. I'm looking for confirm. Let's try that again. Uh, do you want to delete previous users? Yes or no. Now your default is no. So if you hit enter, it's just going to say it's going to it's going to skip deleting them. But I want to delete them. Yes. So instead of thirteen, I should have one if I check one user in the database, which I do. Perfect. Um, now I'm going to create a whole bunch of users. Let's say fifty, and then I'm going to implement a progress bar to show you how cool that is. That's super useful. We use them all the time. Um, so I want to. I want to I want to do 50 50 users let's say I want to delete all the old ones so we're going to check now that that is the case that we have 50 and we do we go back to our command here and what we're going to do is we're going to remove this we don't need this anymore for the demo I'm going to change this to name so we could input a name and we're going to try to import a progress bar. Let me see. So this is built into a, to the command system. So this with progress bar, and there's a couple different ways to implement this, but this was the easiest for the purpose of this video. User all. And by the way, I'm not promising that this is the most efficient way to do something like this. Uh, you really should not do this. You should use a cursor or uh, track it by ID if you're updating, but that's besides the outside the scope of this video. User, user. And so for each record, it's going to update the name to whatever we enter. So user update name to this argument name. Whoops. Now uh, we're local and it's only 50 records, so this will go really fast. It'll kind of defeat the whole purpose of having a progress bar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sleep it for two seconds between each. And I hope that actually works. I haven't tried that before. So let's see. Um, so j just to recap, we're going to take all users in the database and update the name to whatever was entered in the command signature and then sleep for two seconds so you can see that the progress bar actually moves. Uh, so let's go here and let's change every name in the database. I guess I should show. Um, sorry, our tinker app models user first. So in this case, the, the, in this case, the first user's name is uh, Prof. Julie Trombley Senior. 
And once we're done running this command, it should be David. There you go. You can see that, uh, that it's, it's moving very slowly and that's just artificially slowed down, but it is pretty cool. And you could probably see that if you're running a process that's 30 minutes long or 60 minutes long, or even an hour and a half long, assuming that you can, your, 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 uh, your console doesn't freeze on you. Uh, this is very useful. You could see what's happening uh, behind the scenes and how far along you are. So uh, let me stop it here because a lot of these uh, users will be updated so we can check. Let's just get that first one again. It should be David and it is. So you can see that that worked. Uh, and that's just one of the really cool things that you could do. They've built in this whole progress bar. And again, in certain cases, this uh, this will not work. There's different ways to implement it. It's all in the, in the documentation of Laravel if you're interested. Um, I'd like to mention before moving on to testing, because testing is, is important, uh, that you can schedule commands, meaning you can run you can run a command using the signature from within PHP, uh, within your Laravel application. You can just call it like this. But we've also at work uh, kind of figured out that commands are really useful for certain processes that not only you want to run uh, once in a while at, on your own time or at a, in a specific event or whenever happens, you know, it, it depends what your business cases are, but uh, it also makes sense to put logic into commands that you would also like to schedule to run on a, on a, on a schedule, like using a cron. So within Laravel, you have a kernel.php file and you can, you can schedule your commands to run from there. Uh, now I won't go through this, that's a whole different thing, but I just wanted to mention that that is something you can do and something we do at work uh, quite a bit. Now for the last little bit of, uh, of this video, I want to uh, show that you can test commands, right? So what I'm gonna do here is just uh, output info and just do, hey, this command works. And I need a semicolon there. Let me exit this. Hey, this command works. Uh, we're gonna find a test class. Let's see if they've included any they have. And we're gonna add a new test here. Oops, that's totally not what I wanted. Let's copy this. Now I'm, I'm just uh, using the example test here because it's already conveniently put there, test the sample command output. You obviously want to, you would definitely want to name your, your command, uh, your test something uh, reasonable. And to test the command, we could do this artisan sample colon run expects, I believe it's expects output. And we can just, let's, uh, let's do test. This will fail assert exit code zero. And that just means it's just exits without any kind of failure, I believe. And I'm, I'm gonna run this. Um, so art test. Okay, so this fails here, right? Um, expects assertion code. Oh, sorry, test was not printed. There you go, output test was not printed. So we can go back here and copy this because that, that actually is printed. Put it here, run the tests again, and you can see they passed this time. So that's another little clever thing you could do. You could test test your commands, which you absolutely should, by the way, especially if you're doing database operations, you should test for all, all edge cases and corner cases that might come up. Um, and that's really easy to do if, if your logic is contained within a command. And uh, I think, you know, for the last part of the video here, because I've kind of touched on the stuff that's, that I find cool, um, I'm going to show you how easy it is to run commands when you host your app on Cloudways. So let me just get that set up and I will be back in a second. Okay, so I've opened up my Cloudways dashboard to a demo server that I spun up earlier today. Now I only have at one application um, installed on the server. Uh, just for the purposes of demo, it's also a sample uh, command uh, installed on it. So I just wanna show you that when, when you're hosting your apps with Cloudways, you just hit launch SSH terminal, it'll open a new window. And sometimes it takes a little bit, but it works. And then you copy your username. And of course, I'm gonna delete this VPS once I'm done making this video, but, 
There you go, so we're logged in. And now we CD to applications and I'm gonna have one application there called demo app. And within demo app, we wanna to go to public HTML. And now that I've listed everything in directory, you can see we're in a root, uh, we're in the root of the Laravel application. Now, uh, frankly, I don't remember what the name of the command is that I built. So let's see if I can find it. I think it's app uh, console commands. Let's see, demo command, that's it. So uh, let's, uh, let's cat the demo command and see what's going on there. Oh, I won't be able to. Yeah, it's in another directory. Let's see here. So app console commands. So, so as you can see, I've just added a whole bunch of messages here. So when I run this app demo command signature, uh, that's exactly what we should see. So let's just do that, PHP artisan. And keep in mind, I'm in the root of the Laravel application right now. App demo command. And there you go, we have our messages coming out. So that's how easy it is to run these things from Cloudways. Seriously, if, you, if you're looking for something very easy, uh, an easy way to host your, your WordPress or your Laravel apps or really anything built on PHP, uh, Cloudways is the way to go in my opinion. So you could use the link in the description below. Uh, as for the rest of this video, I think I've covered pretty much everything that you need on, on a basic level to understand how commands work. So thank you for watching. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, I'm all ears. So let me know in the description below or in the comments below. Take care.